All right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, uh, your host, Arm. We are back here at the Baseball Hut, too. I need you to like this video and subscribe as we inch closer and closer to the trading deadline. So here we go. I have a couple rumors for you. One that popped up on Twitter today, which I am on, on Twitter, believe it or not. At the baseball hub, if you want to follow me, just go right ahead. So we have some rumors, and one of them includes the New York Mets. Now, I'm not going to put this on the, ba the big channel, but I want to sort of bundle it in here. First up is Justin Verlander. Uh, let's get into it. So J.P. Morosi uh, put out a tweet earlier. The 2023 MLB trade deadline is August 1st this year, as you know. Just over a week away. Trade activity began last Wednesday with the Orioles adding hard-throwing Shintaro Fujinami from the Athletics. Also, would, I would also point out that the Rangers acquired a few weeks ago a Rollers Chapman from the Royals. It seems like only a matter of time before more deals happen. Here are Saturday's rumors to hold you over until then. It has been an extremely quiet uh, few days, I gotta say. Extremely quiet. The Giants. The Giants are among the teams evaluating Mets right-hander Justin Verlander in the lead-up to the deadline, according to MLB Network's John Morosi. It's unclear at this point if the Mets, who entered Saturday six and a half games back, they're now six games back of the wild card, <clears throat> would even consider moving Verlander. It's also unclear if Verlander would be willing to waive his no-trade clause. I would mention that he said the other day when the Mets were in town in New York, that he was uh, not, he was committed here. That could change. You never know. The two-year, eighty-six million dollar pact he signed with the Mets over the winter granted him full no-trade protection. Still, despite the uncertainty, you can nevertheless understand what the Giants are keeping an eye on the situation. The Giant, Giants currently tied with the Diamondbacks for the top wild card spot have received underwhelming production from several of their rotation members. Verlander, 40, has posted a 3.47 ERA and a 2.69 strikeout-to-walk ratio across 14 starts. Those marks may be below his norm, but they still represent the work of an above-average pitcher, and they would make him an upgrade over the likes of Alex Wood, Ross Stripling, and Anthony DiSclefani. I would also point out uh, Max Scherzer. I would point out uh, Jose Quintana in this mix. So just keep that in mind. It might not just be the Mets uh, discussing Verlander with the Giants. It could be other teams. Now, the Mets are in a very precarious position right now because they play the Red Sox this week, and they win the first game of the series. I'm recording this in between games. They must win this series. Tonight, Max Scherzer pitches. He has not pitched a lot of big games for the Mets. But if he pitches well and the Mets lose, he gets one step closer to Addy. In my view, he is the player that will be moved amongst him and Verlander. I think Verlander really wants to stay because I think he looks at things a little bit differently than Scherzer does. Scherzer wants to be on a team that wins. You know, Verlander, I think, looks at New York and his wife, as you know, we don't know, his wife is Kate Upton, the, the supermodel, the, the young lady that was on always on the uh, Sports Illustrated covers. They might look at New York very differently, and they lived here before, than say, for instance, Scherzer does. The Phillies. The Phillies are in a market for a right-handed hitter, according to Scott Labor of the Philadelphia Inquirer. As Labor notes, the Phillies' plan of attack will be dictated in part by how they feel about Bryce Harper's work at first. Harper received his first start at the position on Friday. He made a very good play in that game, by the way. I saw a clip of it. If Bryce can move to first base, it allows us to then free up the DH spot and put Schwerber there a little bit more, top executive Dave Dombrowski told Lieber. And then we have the ability to decide what we want to do in left field. Lober, Lieber, Lauber, <laughs> I'll get his name right, threw out a few names who could be made available, including Red Sox outfielder Adam Duvall and Angels outfielder first baseman Hunter Renfro. We'd add... I, I don't think the Angels are ready to sell yet either, by the way. We'll get into that at the end of this video. We'd add Nationals outfielder Lane Thomas 
and Rockies outfit and Randall Krychek to the collection of potential Phillies targets. I think Krychek is the most realistic name because it's a bad team and Lane Thomas. I don't think Duvall is getting moved I, right now, especially with the Red Sox being, playing so well. And Hunter Renfro is not getting moved right now. And finally, and finally, Shoei Otani. Otani hasn't discussed his future with the general manager. No one can say for sure whether or not the Angels' two-way star Shoei Otani will be traded at the deadline. That evidently includes Otani himself. He told reporters on Friday that he has not had any conversation with the Angels' GM, Perry Manasian, about his future. You can read more about that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter here. Uh, but I don't think that the Angels are moving him. And the Angels were able to get kind of gotten back into the race by playing the New York Yankees. The Yankees, I would mention, are not, are not playing well. Uh, even though they are playing the, the Royals, from what I understand, from what I've read on Twitter, and a little the sort of in-between, the, the lineup isn't great. They really struggled to score runs against that bad Royals team. They have a great pitcher and, and Gary, Jerry Cole. Gary, Jerry Cole. But um, the team is just a bad team, the Yankees. I mean, they, they, they earned their last place uh, placing right now. Um, and the Yankees are another team. Where are they going to go? Are they going to start selling too? It's hard to say. But I don't think the Angels are ready to sell. I don't think they're going to sell just yet. They're right in the thick of the last wild card rate hunt. And I don't think they're going to do that, especially with with Mike Trout coming back sometime in August. I don't think they're going to be moving uh, pieces off that team. They might add at the deadline. They might add at the deadline. They they could probably, I'll tell you a good fit for them, is Candelario. Jameer Candelario of the Nationals. So they need a third baseman. Uh, and he's an improvement over what they had. You know, <laughs> Anthony Rendon, what a disastrous contract. Now, Eduardo Escobar, he's sort of like, he. if you need him in a pinch to play third, he's fine. He, and he's a great guy. You could play him at second. You could DH him. You could play him a little bit in the outfield. He's a very good, uh, very good everyday player if you need him in a pinch. Uh, Candelario going to the Angels seems like a pretty good fit, now that I think about it. You know, but you let me know what you think about this video. Of course, uh, we will be doing all kinds of stuff on this channel, all kinds of rumors, news, whatever you like. Gonna have it here. This is a much broader channel than the Baseball Hut. This Baseball Hut's all about the Mets, and this channel is a little bit of everything for all the teams, and some college players, and some college teams, and just Major League Baseball in general. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Baseball Hut 2. Thank you, and I'll see you later.